What up, Huck Squad? I'm coming at you sitting down on my floor right in front of my fish tank. We got featured in an article for Udisc on how to grow a disc golf YouTube channel, which is honestly mind blowing and really humbling and just really cool. Big thanks to Jared, one of the authors from uh, Udisc, coming out from I think Providence or somewhere in Rhode Island up to Borderland. We played a whole round together and he was asking me questions the whole time, just kind of interviewing me, writing things down, taking notes. I was just really excited to meet up with him and answer all the questions that he had and so what we're gonna do in today's video is I have the article on my phone and I'm just gonna read it and give you guys like a little bit of insight into why I answered certain questions the way that I did if you're ever curious on how to grow a disc golf YouTube channel there's definitely gonna be some tips in here that you can pull out and get some value from if you ever get bored you can kind of just look at the tank even though you can't really see too much uh, for any of our tank lovers we got some platies we got some Dumbo guppies I got a snail, I have a common pleco, and I also have two African frogs. So not the craziest thing, maybe I'll put some b-roll at the end of the fish in the tank, but I have been enjoying the fish tank life as of late. Getting right into the article, we are on Udisc's website and we are under the stories tab and here you see growing a disc golf YouTube channel, tips from Daily Disc Golf's Noah Cronin, the story of Daily Disc Golf's YouTube channel, and tips to grow your own YouTube channel and subscriber base. If you've ever tumbled into the rabbit hole of Disc Golf YouTube, you've probably come across the charismatic, down-to-earth host of the Daily Disc Golf vlog channel, Noah Cronin. Thanks. <laughs> the Foxborough, Massachusetts resident is well known in New England disc golf circles and increasingly beyond for his videos featuring disc golf rounds, tips, products, reviews, and more. So I'm going to give a shout out to Finland right now because Finland is my second highest view viewership country behind the US. And the US is at like 70% of my viewership and I think Finland is around like 7 or 8% so nearly one in every 10 person watching the vlog is from Finland so thank you so much to any of you guys who are from Finland watching this right now you guys are awesome Cronin is a solid player who's far better than average but he is not one of the world's best disc golfers dang <laughs> he also has a full-time career that's not based around disc golf or YouTube I am a general manager of my local Dairy Queen. How he has managed to attract thousands of subscribers without star power or vast amounts of free time to devote to his channel? Question mark. Read on to find out why Cronin got into the world of disc golf YouTube, what's helped him establish a following, and what suggestions he has for people creating their own disc golf YouTube channel. Cronin began playing disc golf as many people do, just hucking plastic with friends around the local course Borderland State Park. Still pretty much my home course. I grew up in Foxborough, I now live a couple towns over. It's a little bit of a further drive, but I still do consider it my home course. Even though Hawkins Woods is a little bit closer, I'm still a Borderland guy for life. I was just one of those kids walking around the course with one disc, throwing a star wraith on huge Anheuser lines. And that was literally me when I first started. Just throwing huge forehand Anheusers. I really wasn't even throwing backhand. I was just manipulating the shot on forehand. And then my putts, I was still putting with a wraith, and I would just hyzer it up and hope it just smashed in. There was no straight putts, it was just a big hyzer with a driver, hoping it would crash into the basket. And there's a little shot from me, a little bit of a younger me with longer hair in uh, my second episode on the Daily Disc Golf channel. But the competitive bug soon hit. He began playing weekly leagues and tournaments, eventually joining the local New England Team Challenge team, the Borderland Bombers, of which he is now a captain. However, before Cronin became the player that he is today, he realized that he needed to practice and improve his game. What better way to do that, he thought, than to take out his phone camera and capture video of his play to analyze later. That notion is how Daily Disc Golf began in 2017. At first, Cronin didn't consider his videos anything more than a tool for personal growth. It started as a way to learn how to get better, not just to build an audience, Cronin said. I just wanted to see myself play so I could critique myself and improve. And that is dead honest. Like, I didn't have intentions of building a brand or building this channel up to what it is today. I legitimately just wanted to film myself playing an average round just to see like what I could do better, compare myself to the pros form, where I can you know, do different things or what mistakes I made that round. In his very first video, see the clip below, Cronin made it clear that he had no concrete plans for his channel. I'm not really sure where this is going to go, how it's going to be done, but I'm working on becoming a better player so it would be cool to document my journey, Cronin told his then tiny audience. Episode 1? Literally nobody, like, I, I had nobody, I had nobody watching, like, I was happy with 10, 20, 30 views, like, it was just like anybody else starting a brand new YouTube channel. 
Created by nothing more than an iPhone 6, a tripod, and Cronin, and a portable battery uh, duct taped to my tripod, always plugged into my phone so that my phone wouldn't die while I was filming. Had no filmmaking knowledge, editing footage together in iMovie. Early daily disc golf videos usually got about 30 views on the first day, and anything over 50 was unusually high. I was literally psyched to get like 60, 70, 80. If I got 100 views on a video, I was like ecstatic. But those numbers gradually started ticking up. While many disc golf YouTube channels are clearly about building a personal brand, chasing views, or showing off, Cronin's style that derived purely from a passion of disc golf and a desire to improve filled a niche that he didn't know was there. His channel was certainly not an immediate smash hit, jeez, thanks Jared, <laughs> but it slowly and surely grew to have a sizable, loyal audience that Cronin has always affectionately called the Huck Squad. What up, Huck Squad? Once his channel started to take off, Cronin applied to be on the media team of disc golf equipment manufacturer Dismania. Um, he got rejected in 2018, but was accepted the following year in 2019, and in 2020, Dismania Connection helped him get the biggest break in his channel's history, a joint video with Dismania sponsored star and disc golf YouTube darling, Simon Lazat. This was a huge moment for my channel, and honestly, definitely kind of started that trajectory. I already had around like 1,500 subs, I'm not sure if the rest of this will talk about that, but I had around 1,500 subs probably in like two to three years of making videos prior to the Simon uh, interaction. As soon as Simon and I got together, we made a couple videos for his channel and then we made this one video for my channel that you see in the thumbnail there. And after my video went up and his video went up, my subs went from 1500 to like 4600 in literally a snap of a finger. Like I think two days, my sub count tripled. So a sub count I've been working for three years to build up tripled in three days, two days, and I was just like blown away, just like refreshing my analytics page as often as I could. It was actually Lazat who reached out to Cronin about collaborating on a video, and Cronin jumped at the chance. I reached out to him like way early in my vlog career, as soon as he kind of moved into Massachusetts and started making his own vlogs, and I don't know if I was left on red, or if I was just like left in the message request folder, but I actually messaged him first, but then like a year, maybe a year and a half went on, and as my channel started to gain a little traction, I think he might have found a couple of my videos. And then he went to message me because I was local and he noticed that he didn't answer my message from like a year and a half ago. So I was at work and I see Simon Lazat wants to send you a message because you get like a message request notification. And I was like, what? And so the rest was history after that. But he, I technically reached out first, a year went by, then he reached out to me. Other than a set of forehand tips, that joint production with Lazat is far and away the most viewed daily disc golf video. So I do have a nine tips and tricks to improve your forehand video that has just been like chugging, chugging for like a year or two now. Like I actually don't understand it and it's really not even like one of my better tutorial videos. I mean, I guess it is because you guys all like it. But other than that video, the forehand tips and the Simon video are like far and away, maybe like 30, 40,000 views above my next highest view count video. The video also nearly tripled Cronin's subscribers in just a few days. Cronin rode that momentum and Daily Disc Golf now has over 320 videos and more than 10,000 subscribers, far more than Cronin had ever dreamed of. Like that's just crazy for me to even say out loud still. That is just absolutely nuts. And one of my friends actually brought to my attention that I'm like maybe 10,000 views away from a million total channel views in my time of having a channel, which is just absolutely absurd. Cronin's experience with Daily Disc Golf has taught him a few things people who want to start a Disc Golf YouTube channel can learn from. Create a schedule and stick to it. Decide when and how often you'll post your videos and don't let yourself miss deadlines. It's hard to get back into a rhythm once you've broken it. Coming from the guy who hasn't had a good rhythm this winter, but it is what it is for a lot of my channel for probably a year, two years, I was very consistent with just like uploading maybe two to three videos a week and I had my three minute Thursday series that would always keep me grounded and have me have a deadline. Keep content consistent. Build a consistent style and focus for your channel. It's not just when, but what you're uploading. So sometimes I've done a few one-off videos like a skateboarding video or like a golf video or like a random video that isn't disc golf and my channel's built on disc golf and YouTube will see that in your tags and in what you write and your thumbnail and everything and they'll put that into consideration when they're dealing with the algorithm and whenever I put out like a random one-off video that doesn't have anything to do with disc golf it just absolutely does not perform that well so you do want to try to keep the content matter similar as well. Uh, be detail oriented. When you do something right, no one takes notice, but the second you do something wrong, they take notice right away. That is so true. 
don't slack on the audio quality. Audio is half of the video, so audio quality is much more important than some creators realize. Always think about aesthetics. Framing shots is underrated and super important. This is so important. If the horizon isn't balanced or the shot is out of focus, the look is both unpleasant and unprofessional. I always try to have my horizon level, and sometimes it's tough when you're on a hill, you're out in the woods, you're playing, and it's tough to get your tripod to set up with a horizon that's level. And sometimes when you're panning, the horizon will shift based on what angle your tripod is on. But I always do my best job to try to have a nice frame on every single shot so that it, it feels like you're not tilted out there and it doesn't look like the horizon is tilted because it really does make a big difference. Interact with your commenters. Answer every comment. This helps with building a relationship with your viewers and a community. Even respond to the negative ones as long as you do so respectfully. So once again I haven't been like really on it this winter in terms of my schedule and like comment uh, answering and stuff like that but I'd say for four years I was consistently answering every single comment that came on every single video even if they were talking crap about me, even if it was, you know, negative, even if it was just, you know, thanks for the video, I would say thanks for the support. Every single comment, and I'm gonna get back into that, just falling out of the loop, and like you see at the beginning, when you fall out of the loop, it's really hard to get yourself back into that rhythm. That built so many relationships with people, and when you answer someone's comment multiple times, they, they appreciate that you appreciate them watching. So it's like, it's kind of like this little loop of, them appreciating you and you giving them appreciation back. So if you just never answer any comments, then you're never really going to build relationships with the people that are watching your content. Like I've built so many relationships with people just through comments and then they'll message me on Instagram or Facebook and we'll have conversations and it's a way to build up um, that trust and kind of that leverage to always have people come back to your videos and potentially leave another comment whenever they're you know, feeling in the right to do so. Consider all comments with an open mind. There are both truths and lies in the criticism, so it's important to think carefully about every comment and what you can learn, uh, if you can learn anything from it. Doing this is actually how current Disc Golf Network personality and Central Coast uh, founder Ian Anderson honed the commenting skills that earned him the honor of commenting a pro Disc Golf World Championship and multiple US Disc Golf Championships. Don't let the numbers affect your emotions. Some videos will have low view counts and subscriber totals take time to climb. Keep your cool and do your best to just get better. I would like seeing the numbers go up, but I didn't make content to only make the numbers go up. I made content and I still do because I just really enjoy it and I enjoy watching it back and I enjoy the process of creation, starting with nothing, ending with something that I feel proud about. And the fact that people the fact that people gravitate towards the content and appreciate it and continue to come back is just like a plus side. Like, I never, and I still am not really in the mindset of, all right, what video can I make that's gonna get the most views? I just think, what video can I make that I'm gonna have fun making and enjoy the process of? Yeah, there are some times that I'm like editing and I'm like, oh, like I hope this video is a banger, whatever. But I don't get like, I try not to get too emotionally invested if I'm looking at my app and I see that the video is not performing that well. I'm just like, eh, well, at least a couple hundred people, maybe not a couple thousand people, but at this point, if I get a couple hundred views on a video, that's a little bit lower than what my channel average is. So if I only get like a couple hundred or if I'm under that thousand view mark, sometimes I can be like, oh, like I felt like that video should have done a little better. But in the end, like I've always been like a one is greater than zero guy. So even if like one person enjoyed the content, then I'm like, all right, that's good. And so even the fact that like a lower view count video gets a couple hundred compared to like 5,000 or whatever, which comparative to other YouTubers, 5,000 is still low, but I don't wrap myself up in the numbers or like trying to get like overly emotional about, you know, this video got 10,000 views. Ah, I'm so pumped. Oh, this video only got 900 views. Like what did I do wrong? Just keep putting out stuff, keep putting out stuff, keep putting out stuff. That nine forehand tips and tricks video, I would have never guessed that that video was gonna be my highest performing video when I was going to make it. So you never know what video is gonna pop and what video is kinda gonna be like meh. And sometimes I spend 10 hours making a video, filming, editing, thumbnails, description, everything, and it flops. And sometimes I go out and I film a video in 30 minutes and I feel like I rush through it and I put it together and it pops. And I'm like, why does a short like video like that pop off more than something I spend 10 hours and I care so much more about? 
And I don't know, like I, I don't know. So you just have to keep making stuff, keep putting stuff out and eventually something will hit and you'll create some sort of opportunity for yourself. Where's Daily Disc Golf headed? While Daily Disc Golf is still much a hobby to Cronin, he's open to becoming something much bigger in the future and has an idea of the direction he'd like to go in. He hopes to buy a van and travel, but not to chase the dream of making it big as a pro player or to film elite tournaments like the current uh, popular disc golf channels do. I just want to be the first person to document over 2,000 courses. So I don't know, this might even be the first time I'm like publicly talking about it with you guys, but I really have no interest of being on the Pro Tour or competing on the Pro Tour or trying to get myself to be a 1020 rated player to compete on the Pro Tour. I would absolutely love traveling and playing a new course every day and filming that course and then editing it in the afternoon and putting it up and then going to the next course the next day and shedding light on as many possible courses as I can across the country or maybe even across you know different countries down the line but that is just like so compelling to me just going and playing a bunch of courses that don't have any public video or semi-professional looking video for for their communities to look at like one of the biggest compliments i get locally all the time is people use my videos for like tournament prep or for like team challenge prep or for you know going to, to look at a course that's maybe an hour and a half away from their house and whether or not it's worth the trip so a lot of the compliments that i get are just from people that appreciate being able to see the full course all 18 holes how i attack the holes going to community to community 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 all around the country and doing that I don't know it's it, it gives me chills honestly just talking about it and like I feel it in my soul that it's gonna happen so that is my goal not to be a touring pro and hitting all the pro store stops maybe I'll hit a couple in a year maybe one or two but my goal would be to travel and get to as many possible different courses as I can and shed light on all these different courses that just don't see the light of day online. Cronin filming at Maple Hill with one of the world's best disc golf courses with a much more sophisticated setup than his original gear. So now I have a mirrorless camera, I have a nice um, tripod, I have an external microphone, I have a pretty solid setup, I'm really happy with my setup. Uh, in that picture, I do have my external monitor also on the top, but I don't really use that too much anymore. It's heavy, it's clunky, uh, it's nice, but I don't really use it too much anymore. Whether Cronin reaches that lofty goal or not, he's already proud of what he's accomplished and plans to keep daily disc golf alive for the foreseeable future. Looking back now, it's great to have all this documentation of me playing, and in the future, I can imagine sitting down and watching this with my kids, just having something to share with, the team, with them and reflect on everything Cronin said. So that's everything. I hope you were able to take some valuable tips from that. It's honestly just really cool to like look back on that and read it and just have that article out there now. Like I had a lot of people that appreciated that and appreciated the insight into what I kind of have done over the past couple of years. And I'm just so thankful and so fortunate and so grateful for all you guys that continue to come back and leave comments and interact with me and say what's up on the course and message me personally. and just everything that this channel has brought me. It's just been so much fun. And like it said, I have no foreseeable plans of stopping. Yeah, I work a full-time job. I do my best to do this on the side, but I would love to be able to do this full-time and just go and travel and film hundreds of courses and you know shed light on as many courses as I possibly can. If you're in the mindset of starting a disc golf YouTube channel, really decide, like or any YouTube channel, before you start, really have a hard conversation with yourself on, am I doing this because I wanna earn money? Or am I doing this because I really enjoy the process of making videos and documentation and just putting stuff out there? Because if you're doing it for the money, it is not gonna work. I do not make enough money from this channel to support myself full-time. I have a full-time job and I always tell people, you don't want to go full-time on YouTube like as soon as you might think. It's a lot of work for a little bit of money, especially at the beginning. Like I don't, I make enough to cover like my Wi-Fi bill every month. Like I don't make thousands of dollars from this channel, but I'm also not chasing the money. So there are some people that would be in my position and like they'd be reaching out for brand deals, they'd be reaching out for sponsorships, they'd be reaching out for all this money, they'd be, I don't know, it's just I'm not, at least not yet, I'm not really in it for the money, I'm just in it for the fun and for the, at this point, you know, creating relationships with you guys and building this brand up and just having a good time. Like, 
I could never make another dime from this channel and I would still be okay like living the life that I'm living. Obviously I have goals of doing the van life and you know being fully supported by this channel. But in the end, if that weren't to happen, I would still be really happy just like working my job and making videos and playing locally and doing whatever I'm doing now. So it's not like I'm unhappy. Like I'm honestly probably one of the happiest people like in my friend group or in my family. And I'm not saying that to brag, but I've just set my life up around happiness, not around money. Like even my job, I don't make the most money. I make enough to support myself by myself with no roommates, but I don't make loads and loads of money. I have a savings account. I'm doing okay, but I'm not well off by any means. And it's like, I've had opportunities to go work in other spots to make more money, but I wouldn't be as happy and I wouldn't have the schedule to do what I want to do with the channel and with my disc golf life. So I've literally built my life around happiness over monetary income. And I don't know, that's just how I wanted to go about it. Obviously everyone has their own different way. Obviously some YouTube channels take off quickly and then they're able to monetize and you know go full time, but that's not how my story went. So. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm not sure how long this is gonna end up being, but I thought that this would be a cool video to make. Hope you enjoyed maybe getting distracted by my fish tank a little bit, and I could possibly throw a little bit of B-roll of my fish uh, after this. I have some vertical videos of my fish. I don't really have any horizontal videos of my fish, but hope you guys enjoyed. Love all you guys. Uh, drop a like if you enjoyed, drop a sub if you wanna see more. Ask any questions you want in the comments, and I'm gonna start you know, getting back to the rhythm of answering comments again, and keep eating your vegetables. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.